hello you guys and welcome back to my channel i have another cooking video for you and today we're going to be making meatloaf mm, classic all right so first what you're going to need is of course your ground beef i use ketchup liquid smoke barbecue sauce bread crumbs eggs seasonings of my choice i use onions sometimes i use bell pepper garlic butter you're also going to need some olive oil. First and foremost, you guys, make sure you preheat your oven. I preheated mine to 420 degrees. Then I'm going to go ahead and saute my vegetables. This will make sure that they aren't raw and hard all up in the meatloaf because ain't nobody got time to be biting into no hard onion, child. Saute the onion, please, and thank you. I like to saute my onions first because they take a little more time than garlic does. And garlic burns a little quick, so you want to make sure that you get the hard stuff out of the way first. So then you can drop your garlic in there and then you're just about done. Like I said earlier, I tend to use bell pepper most of the time. I just did not have any this time. But if you are going to use bell pepper, make sure you throw it in at the same time you throw your onions in. And when they're just about done, go ahead and throw in your garlic. And you want to do this first so that when you add it to your meat mixture, it does not cook the egg or the meat. So you want to let this cool down completely before you add it into your meat. Y'all, one thing I hate doing is chopping up garlic. I don't mind chopping up anything else in the kitchen, but garlic, it's so small and it's like so redundant. It's kind of sticky and it's just annoying. So this little garlic press that I got for little to nothing from Ikea be coming in handy, child, because all I got to do is just, you know, take the little shelling off of the garlic, toss it in there, press it, boom, done. Also, y'all, ignore that my onions are slivered. I use this little onion press and it's supposed to dice the onions for me, but my onion was so small that it slivered it, child. So ignore that. Dice your onions. Don't sliver it like my little thing did, okay? Our onions are just about done and you don't want to get it too mushy because, you know, it has to cook in the oven. So tender is just good enough. And once you're done, you want to sit this to the side off of the heat so that it can cool down and it's ready for your mixture when you are ready for it. Okay. All right. Now it's time to season our meat. I'm going in with garlic powder, y'all. I know I use fresh garlic, but I'm going to use some granulated garlic as well. Okay. The more the merrier. I don't like to use a lot of salt, so I make up for it with spices. And so you can use as much spice as you want because you know, no high blood pressure. So yeah, I'm going to end with onion powder as well. Some thyme, dried thyme that is. My favorite roasted garlic and herb seasoning. Salt, pepper, you can use whatever you like. Y'all, I have really been surprising myself because I did not grow up eating meatloaf. Like meatloaf is something that I started cooking within the last five years but i really like it it's a quick easy little one two and in the oven you know it's not a lot of fuss and it'll get you out the kitchen in you know at least about 30 45 minutes and i'm that's all right with me anytime i can get out the kitchen in 30 to 45 minutes that's a w okay that's a win and i'm all for the wins okay so yeah season up your ground beef I also wanted to add that it's a few things that I didn't have that I usually put inside of my meatloaf. Worcestershire sauce or however you say it. W sauce, Worcestershire. I don't know, child. The, 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 the <laughs> now I'm over here stuttering. The W word sauce. Y'all know what I'm talking about. I usually put that in there. I usually put, if I have some A1 sauce on hand, I usually put that in there as well. It's kind of hard to get meatloaf seasoned to the center, and so the sauces help. I don't want to go crazy with the salt, and so to make up for the flavor, I like to use barbecue sauce, ketchup. If I have A1 sauce on hand, I'll pour in a little A1 because I like it to be very savory, very flavorful. <laughs> 
I like it to be very flavorful is the word that I'm trying to say. <laughs> I like it to be very flavorful. And so when you add those sauces, it kind of adds to the depth of flavor. It's kind of hard to get meatloaf flavored to the center. And so when you use aromatics like garlic and onion and barrel pepper, along with the sauces like barbecue sauce or ketchup, it adds to the flavor of this loaf of meat. <laughs> I went in with one egg. I usually use about one egg for every two pounds of meat. Y'all, I'm also using a leaner ground beef in this video. It's not 80-20, which would probably be ideal for meatloaf. What I'm using is really lean, and so I won't be putting in as much breadcrumbs as I would if this was not such a leaner ground beef. Another thing to look out for is overworking your meat. You don't want to overwork the meat. That will cause it to be dry and super dense, and that won't be very good. You'll want to mix it until it's just incorporated. Don't like overwork it because you don't want it to be dry, okay? What lets me know the meatloaf is the right consistency and ready to form is if when I pull the meat over to one side of the bowl and it doesn't spread as much, then I know, okay, this is not too dry, it's not too wet, and it's ready to form in my loaf pan. This is just about the right consistency. You can tell that it's still pretty loose. However, it's not like super loose and wet to the point that it won't hold or form a shape. Again, the meat that I'm using here, I would not recommend. Unless you are, of course, looking to eat leaner cuts of meat, leaner ground meats. But if you want it to be juicy or fatty, oily, then you definitely don't want to use what I have here. Now, once I'm done mixing everything together, I like to taste it because I don't like surprises when it comes to my food, okay? I need to know it's going to hit every time. So I take a small ball of the meat, spread it out very thin so that it cooks quickly. I give it a quick taste and based on how it tastes, I add what I need to add. In this case, on this video, I had to add some more barbecue sauce because it was tasting a little too sweet for me from that ketchup that I put in there. And once I did that, it was ready to mold. You don't have to have a loaf pan to make meat loaf. As you can see here, I'm using my glass Pyrex dish and I'm forming it just fine. It doesn't have to be a perfect loaf. Just form it, throw it in the oven, child. It's gonna do what it's gonna do, okay? Once I'm done forming it, making it look cute or whatever, we're gonna toss her in the oven and then we're moving on to our sauce. Now, you can keep it basic and just do ketchup, but me, me on the other hand, I'm gonna go off. And what I'm gonna do is mix everything up together, okay? I'm going in with ketchup, barbecue sauce, liquid smoke. Y'all, the liquid smoke, it adds a flavor, like a grilled flavor, like you cook something out on the grill. And I love the depth of flavor that it adds to my sauces. And so, yeah, I do a little hot sauce just to give it a little acidity and a little kick of heat. It doesn't make it too spicy. It just depends on how much you put in there. But like I said earlier, Worcestershire sauce, if I had it, I would put that in. If I had A1, I would put that in as well. I added a tad bit of my favorite seasoning, the garlic and herb seasoning, and give it a mix. What I like to do is when the meat loaf is just about done, I go ahead and baste the top of the meat loaf with it. And then I let it cook an additional 10 to 15 minutes, depending on the inside temperature, which should be 160 degrees for a well done meatloaf. And your result should be this. You guys, this meatloaf was very good. Now again, child, don't get no lean meat and think it's supposed to be juicy and oily and all of that good stuff. This was lean, so it was, you know, very healthy tasting. <laughs> However, it was still good nonetheless, and I paired it with some roasted broccoli and some creamy mashed potatoes, child. Do you see the mashed potatoes back there in the cut? Looking real good, looking real good. 
I cut into the meatloaf so you can see, honey, she's done, okay? She's done and she's ready to plate up. Please allow your meatloaf to sit for at least 10 minutes. This will ensure that it does not fall apart once you cut it fresh out of the oven. Child, that thing gonna fall apart. So let it sit and set up for at least 10 to 15 minutes. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like, comment, subscribe to the channel, turn on your notifications so that you are aware every time I post the video. And until next time, you guys, thank you for watching.